Elaine, her husband's right there with her, and then she's able to do it on her own. She was very cognizant inside, although she couldn't speak very well. She was very cognizant of the fact that she was getting well and that there was hope for her, and she worked very hard. So she would walk, oftentimes with somebody right beside her, like you see on the left with her husband, and holding that belt tightly within nine days. There she is on the right. Nobody's within six feet of her. She's totally balanced. That's unbelievable. And she was walking. She walked there by herself. And of course, she had the walls. We want them to always be safe. But this lady, the husband said to me, you know, we've been all over the world for nine years. And in nine days, you did more than anybody did in nine years. Emily's eyes had never tracked, and a lot of people have issues with the eye, one eye, one out. We didn't particularly work on it, we just did the therapies, and boom, they came together. We had Matt with OCD, he had outstanding changes. And then we had our little Johnny, who was so severely autistic. Look at this, it took a grandmother, and a grandfather, and a mother, and a father. They would rotate, so there was always two with him at one time because he was so severe. On the right-hand side, here he is at the end of the program. He's with me, he's following my directions, he's in the room alone, he doesn't need anybody to control his behavior. So where would you go if you had spent uh, thousands of dollars on therapy all over the world and you'd endured hundreds of hours of therapy with minimal results, you were taking drugs, they weren't getting anything but masking and you felt hopeless or helpless. Well, you could spend 12 days in the brain camp and transform your life like Jeannie did. Jeannie now has married, She's got a, a solid relationship. Her mom just emailed me the other day and said, thank you so much for saving my daughter's life. She now has twins, they're a year old. She's absolutely integrated back into life like she never had before, and she's whole. <laughs> then we have Jason. I'll tell you a little secret. The number one, number one, correction for seizures is this water. Every single person that has seizures is dehydrated. And a dehydrated episode will cause it to flow and to come and to have a seizure. The second thing is we're eating breath mints, gum, and toothpaste that have aspartame. Aspartame will cause a seizure. Just look it up it will trigger a seizure, and it is neurotoxic. It will cause damage in the brain. So Jason's seizures were pretty much controlled and gone by the time he was done, and his speech went from, I am okay, to, how are you today, Jason? I am just fine, thank you. He totally was able to process that speech pathway. And then Yvette, this was such a beautiful story because Yvette, self-confidence, she went on to finish high school, but the coolest thing in the whole world, which we didn't expect, she did hyperbaric a lot. And um, her optic nerve regenerated. Now, we saw it there. We saw the changes in the test that we give them. It's a visual test. We saw the changes because she could see, but she went back to her, her ophthalmologist and he said, your optic nerve is restored. So we knew that what we had done was verified. <laughs> then Chloe, this dear little girl, guess what? When you take out one side of the brain, you can get function on the other side. And so we began to work with what we had. She was able to then use her left side. She was now able to do the trampoline. She was moving her hand, she was moving her leg. She was beginning to have her speech come and she was initiating. She had hope. She had hope. She began to initiate her own healing whereas before she was like, okay, you put these, you know, she's never gonna get well, she's never gonna do anything. Elsa, our severely autistic child, she began to speak. She went up to her mommy and said, I love you. Talk about tears. She was in everybody's lap. Autistic children are, they don't have eye contact and they don't want to have anything to do with you. Everybody was just like, wow, this little girl on the left, you can even see the change in her face. She was a new little girl very quickly. And Vernice, she got her balance. She was there with her grandson who had issues in his brain and they both had incredible changes. And the key, our water, our water, our water. We had 33% increase in our changes and the power of what we were doing just increased 
Everybody was starting to get miracles, literally miracles. I mean, folks, have you ever heard of this kind of thing before in a program? We're just this little piece of diamond there, and we're just waiting to be able to give it to the world when we are given what we need to do that. But we have found the pathways, and one of the most important keys is to have the water because 80% of that brain is water. And we know that our staff is so, um, they need the water too because we need the energy to do it so that our staff is drinking the water. Thank you so much. I will be available. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Come on, everybody, give it up for Dr. Corbin Allen. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Thank you. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, all right. Hey, I just want to welcome our viewers from around the world. Welcome to the Orlando Enagic 2013. Glad to have you on board with us today. Uh, if you missed a little bit of Corey and Allen's presentation, you'll be able to see that right after the end of the day. It'll be on replay. So again, welcome to the viewers all around the world. Thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning again. Are you guys excited? All right. Well, the next speaker that we're going to bring up this morning is no other than Dr. Peggy Parker. Come on out, Dr. Peggy Parker. Good morning, everybody. I'm so excited to be here again. Um, I'm trying to figure out where I can be, where I can see you. <laughs> here we go. Sometimes those lights are a little overwhelming. <clears throat> so what I want to talk to you about today is kind of a continuation of the talk I gave yesterday. But we've had a little schedule change, so we're really going to just do kind of part one today. Um, and then later we'll get on to part two. So as you know, I'm a naturopath and a biological medicine doc. And I had a medical spa in North Idaho for a number of years before I actually found out about this particular ionized water. <laughs> and so in my medical practice, I did all kinds of testing on my patients. And when I found this particular water ionizer, back in the days when I started, uh, when I was a distributor with the Nagic, the first machine that I bought was actually a DX. It wasn't even a DX2, it was the DX. How many of you have been around so long that there were only DXs available? <laughs> yeah, there's just a couple of us. Um, I told somebody a long time ago that if you, did, if you kind of figured out how, if you compared how long I've been in Enagic or been with this um, technology to dog years, I'd be super old, <laughs> right? <laughs> so um, I actually found out about this technology in January of 2005 and bought a machine right away. And because I'd been doing all these biological medicine tests with folks, as soon as I bought my machine, I took it home, I made arrangements to test 10 of my patients that were 60 years and older. And I'll kind of give you an overview of why I did that. Back in the day that I bought my machine, we had this policy that you could return your machine after 30 days for all your money back with no questions asked. Well, I had had such a remarkable experience when I drank the water that I had to buy it and I had to figure out why it was working. So I wanted to use all of these people who were over 60 because once you, as you age, it gets harder and harder to make shifts in your health. And so I thought, well, I'm just gonna really give this thing a run for its money and at the end of 30 days, if I don't see anything, I'm just gonna return it, right? So I got these folks in and I didn't know, nobody could tell me how much water are the people supposed to drink, what kind of, you know, what are we supposed to do? So I just started checking. Because as I explained to some of you yesterday, my mind kind of works like a three-year-old's mind. Uh, if any of you have ever had a three-year-old or been around a three-year-old, you know that the, their favorite question is why. And so I am always asking why. And if that's true, then why is that true? And if that's true, then why is that true? And so I had so many whys, I just decided that I was gonna get some folks and start testing them. So I'm gonna show you in just a second here some test results that I got early on with that DX machine that caused me to 
keep asking why, 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 why. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of background and let you know that one of my patients that didn't participate in this study because she'd already moved away, but when she started, when she came to see me, she was sent to me by a holistic MD in Spokane, Washington, who gave me a, the best compliment. He told me that when he had done everything he knew to do with his patients and he was still left scratching his head, he sent them to me and they always got better. So he sent me Lori because Lori was 23 years old and through this biological testing that I did, we were able to understand that her biological age, her chronological, her chronological age was 23, but her biological age was 84. So doctors had only given her six months left to live, but they didn't know why she was sick. They had no idea. They just knew that she was declining at such a rapid rate. So that makes sense, right? The biological age is how old the, um, the organs in your body are. And so that biological age was 84 years old on a 23-year-old young woman. And we worked really hard with Lori, my staff and I, at my uh, clinic, my medical spot in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. We worked for, with her for four years, for four years, almost every day, for four years. We worked hard, she worked hard, and at the end of four long years and lots and lots of time and lots and lots of money spent, her biological age and her chronological age matched at 27. And that was an amazing thing to have happen, but what I, you know, what I really wanted to see was would this water help in any way? Now, I was really focused on the pH back in those days, and it was this test and, and the ensuing tests of other people who I had on the water that really got me to change my mind about what's really important with this water. And this is where, why I call this talk, this is where technology meets biology. So um, in this next slide, what I want you to see, um, I don't know how I'm supposed to change slides here. I don't seem to have a clicker. Okay, well, that's backwards. How do we get this to work? You gotta, you gotta no. Get this on. Pardon me? Green There's a, oh, a green, green button. button. Oh my gosh, technology. Technology's meeting Dr. Parker, and they're not really actually meshing too well this morning, right? <laughs> so, sorry about that, folks. So, here we go. Here is this test. Now, there's a lot of stuff on here you won't really be able to understand, and that's okay, but I want you to, to look right up here at this physical age and biological age, because I want to show you what happened to my friend Bob when he started drinking the water from that machine back in 2005, and it was a DX machine. So here we go. Bob's physical age at the time was 71, but it's biological age was 103. So chronologically, he's just 71, but his biological age is 103. Now, Bob had been a patient of mine for a long time, and he'd already done so many things to enhance his health. So this, this he was no stranger to eating well and getting some exercise, and he looked pretty good. But as you can see, he was pretty old internally. Now remember, I told you I didn't have any idea how to share the water. I didn't have any idea how much water people should drink. I didn't know any of that. So I just had people come over every day 
and get a gallon of water and told them to drink as much of it as they could, right? So I tested him um, the, for the first time on March 10th, and he drank. So what he did was come in um, having fasted for 12 hours. And he brought me his first morning's urine specimen. I took a saliva sample. I took a blood sample. And I ran it through this little machine called quantitative fluid analysis. And it spit out this information. And this is where, I, where all this comes from. So you can see on the 10th of March, he was, his biological age was 103. He got his first gallon of water that day. He drank that water for seven days. And then at the night of the, on the night of the seventh day, he started his 12-hour fast, came in on the eighth day. I took the test on the 18th, and look what happened to his biological age. It dropped from 103 to 97. That was amazing. That was amazing. Because back when, when, you know, in the days when all my patients and Lori and all the, if we saw after a three-week juice fast, all kinds of treatments, you know, several thousand dollars of time, energy, and effort, if we saw a two to five-year drop after three weeks of intense treatment, we were partying. We were yoo-hooing all around the room. Look what happened. All he did is change his water. He just changed his water, and he lost how many years? How many years did you see right there? Six. Seven, actually, right? Seven years, right? One, virtually one year for every day he drank the water. That's incredible. That was incredible. But I had no idea why. I still didn't know why. And my brain just kept studying and thinking and studying and thinking. And about six months into all of the studying and looking at old tests and new tests and old tests and new tests, the light bulb went off in my brain. And I said, oh my gosh, I think I finally got it. I think I finally got it. So um, I was in Ireland a, few, a couple of months ago. And uh, the last time I checked Google, I had about 10 or 20,000 Google hits on my name. <laughs> and so it had been a few years since I checked. So I asked one of the guys in Ireland to check and see what my YouTube, I mean, what my Google hits were. I was thinking maybe, you know, maybe I'm up to 50,000 now. <laughs> it's over 5,500,000 hits now. <laughs> And the interesting thing is that back in 2005, when I started uncovering what I'm about to tell you, is that nobody was talking about oxidation. Nobody was talking about the link between oxidation and health or ill health. But since I started talking about oxidation, it seemed like the whole world started to uncover this idea that oxidation was actually behind all this whole trio of destruction, that oxidation actually is linked to dehydration, which is linked to inflammation. So I am so fortunate to be talking right after Dr. Allen, because she already outlined so many uh, points that I don't have to make. She already let you know that almost every disease is somehow linked to this dis trio of destruction of oxidation, dehydration, and inflammation. And so many of you might have already seen this illustration in some of the booklets that are out at 6A Tools. But you can see that virtually every disease process, from, from the brain to the eyes to the heart to kidneys and lungs and blood vessels and skin and the immune system and joints and multi-organ dysfunctions, that all of those have a component of oxidation. And then we will also, so if you just do a Google search and you put in Alzheimer's and oxidation, or chronic kidney disease and oxidation, or um, Lyme's disease and oxidation, you will see that there have been clinical trial studies that link these things together. And then if you also look and do that same Google search and put in dehydration, you'll see lots of 
connections. And if you do that same search with inflammation, you'll see lots of other studies. So <clears throat> what I want to talk to you about today is this, that the, every one of these things is connected to that entire scenario of oxidation, dehydration, and inflammation. And that if you were to go to a doctor and fill out the, that paperwork, you know, when you're a new patient and you do that family history and you have to check all those boxes to say who had what in your family history, then those doctors would tell you that if you have a family history of cancer or heart disease or glaucoma or depression or dementia, that you're in line to, to have that as well. Anybody ever hear that, right? So remember just a couple of months ago, the big sensation that happened that came out when Angelina Jolie de decided to prophylactically remove both of her breasts because of the cancer gene, right? I am here to tell you something. I am here to tell you that your DNA is not your destiny. And just in case you didn't get it, I'm going to say it again. Your DNA is not your destiny. So I'm going to explain why that's true. This is just a picture of a cell, and we're going to talk about a little bit of basic biology. You have about 100 trillion cells in your body, and each of those cells has a few things in common. They all have a coating on the outside or a covering on the outside that's called your cell membrane. And that cell membrane is actually made out of two layers of fat. It has a pretty fancy name. It's called a phospholipid bilayer. And so you can see that there's the top layer and a bottom layer. And what that cell membrane is supposed to do, as you can see from this illustration, is that it's supposed to let oxygen come into the cell, it's supposed to let water come into the cell, and it's supposed to let carbon dioxide out of the cell freely. Other things like minerals and enzymes and the things that Shan talk, Stratton talked about yesterday, those things are all pretty tightly controlled, and he demonstrated that to you yesterday. But water, oxygen, and carbon dioxide are supposed to freely come in and out because the water coming into the cell actually balances the pH. The oxygen coming into the cell gives you enough oxygen to create energy in your mitochondria to fuel your cell that fuels your body. And as that's happening, as these cellular things are happening inside the cell, it produces acid waste like carbon dioxide, and so that needs to come back out of the cell freely. <clears throat> so I want to explain how this whole process can get kind of fouled up by oxidation. So some of you may or may not know that a free radical is just a healthy, normal atom or molecule that has now had something happen to it and it lost an electron. So you can see here that that's just an oxygen atom. And in nature, nature loves paired electrons. Nature loves everything to be in balance. And so it loves, loves, loves paired electrons. And you can see in this um, atom of oxygen, there used to be four pairs of electrons. But something happened, and this one electron got kicked out of orbit, and now this, what was a healthy, life-giving oxygen atom, became a free radical. And this is how it happened. So we had a stable atom that was, and had all eight electrons all paired up into four pairs, but something happened, either a consumption of alcohol or sodas or breathing polluted air or eating food or breathing air or drinking water with toxins, lots of chemicals, 
um, fluoride, things like heavy metals, UV rays, X-rays, even your cell phones and your computers and television, um, and now with our genetically modified foods, one of those things happened from the environment that could kick that electron out of orbit. But that's not the only way it happens. In fact, our bodies are free radical producing machines all on their own because exercise, emotional stress, cellular respiration, when our, what our body's making energy, normal immune functions, and even inflammation can kick one of those electrons out of orbit and create this free radical oxygen. Now, when Corinne was talking, she was talking about free radical scavengers. Well, that's what this oxygen, what's missing an electron is. It's a free radical scavenger. So it's actually going to go to the cells in your body and look for an electron to steal so that it can have four pairs or eight electrons again, because nature loves paired electrons. When that has happened often enough on your cell membranes, it changes the entire fatty cellular membrane. Those fats, because fats very easily oxidized, um, I, I want you to think about being in your kitchen where you might have fried something, and you try to clean that vent fan in your kitchen or the wall behind your stove, and it has that thick, sticky fat on that's what the fat on your cell membrane starts to look like after oxidation because that fat on your vent fan, that fat on the wall, that's just oxidized fat. So that starts to happen to the cell membrane. And as that happens, now oxygen is being repelled. Water's being repelled. Carbon dioxide's getting trapped inside the cell. And now we've got a really unhealthy cell membrane. Because as the cell membrane becomes oxidized, it becomes oxygen deprived. It becomes water deficient or dehydrated. And as that dehydration happens, the acids are concentrating inside the cell and upsetting the cellular pH of that particular tissue. So as you can see, as oxidation happened to the cell, it set up a whole situation for dehydration. And that set up a whole situation for inflammation. Now, as we pointed out, every single one of these disease processes or illnesses are related back to oxidation, dehydration, and inflammation. How many of you have ever read the book, Your, many Cry Your Body's Many Cries for Water, or You're Not Sick, You're Thirsty, all talking about how disease processes are connected to dehydration? How many of you have ever gotten a cut or a sore and you had inflammation, that red, puffy something all around it, right? So we're all familiar with that. And how many of you have heard the word antioxidant in your lifetime, right? Unless you were living under a rock in the last five or six years, you've heard of, of antioxidants. But what is an antioxidant? An antioxidant, sorry, I, an antioxidant is just something that works against oxidation. So I want to show you how this cycle of inflammation, I mean of oxidation, dehydration, and inflammation actually impacts your body. And then later we're going to get to how antioxidants can reverse that. So here we go. We're going to stop, start at the top of this illustration. And so your immune system, in order to protect you, so let's, let's just pretend that you got a cut or a scrape. Right? And so now your skin, this protective covering, has an opening to the outside world. 
And so your immune system immediately initiates an inflammatory response. That's our first response for healing, is for your body to send all kinds of oxidizers to that area to destroy the microbes that are trying to get in, the bacteria, the viruses, the fungus, trying to destroy all those microbes and to take away any dead tissue. And that's the purpose of inflammation. Now, as those free radicals come in to cause that inflammatory response and to destroy those microbes and to take away that necrotic tissue, what it does is cause t damage to the tissues around the cut. So how your body normally works is once it's sent in all those nasty oxidizers to kill all that bacteria, to, to take away all those dead cells, then your body's supposed to send in lots of antioxidants in the form of glutathione that we produce inside of our bodies. It's supposed to send in superoxide dismutase, or SOD. To, it's another one of the antioxidants our bodies make. And it's going to send those antioxidants in to clean up all the damage that was caused by that inflammation. Now, remember, <clears throat> Because we are so bombarded, and I think I forgot to tell you this, and this is so important. Those 100 trillion cells you have in your body, every single one of them is bombarded by hits from free radical, by 10,000 free radicals every day. Do that math, that's a huge number. 100 trillion cells, each one of them bombarded every day by 10,000 free radicals that come from the environment or come from inside of our body. Now, as because of that, we've already diminished the amount of antioxidants that our bodies can, can manufacture. And so now what we've set up in this whole inflammatory stage is that now we've got this damage to the surrounding tissue and our body needs to send out antioxidants but we don't have enough. We don't have enough antioxidants. So this, this, um, this whole process of inflammation creates that oxidation in the surrounding tissues. That oxidation is going to set up a situation to those cell membranes right around that cut or injury that causes dehydration. That dehydration is going to concentrate the acid waste inside the cell until that cell becomes so unhealthy that your body looks at it as an unhealthy cell. And so your body mounts a new defense against that unhealthy cell and sends more inflammation to the area, another inflammatory response. That inflammatory response creates more oxidation to cell membranes, which creates more dehydration, which creates more concentration of acids inside the cell, which the body looks at and says, oh, that cell's so unhealthy, we need to mount another inflammatory response. We need to send more oxidizers to that area. And that creates this downward spiral of health. So oxidizers are sent to the area by your immune system. That creates more oxidation to the cell membranes, that creates more dehydration, that dehydration creates more inflammation, that creates more oxidation, that creates more inflammation, more dehydration. So do you see how this downward spiral gets started? Not such good news, right? But now I want to change subjects a little bit because the water machine that each of you have or have been told about if you're new in the group, it has the power to do something really interesting to water. So as the, as the water passes through an electrically charged field in that water cell inside the machine, something happens and the water splits. So we start with regular H2O for some reason. My technology is still not working today. There it goes. So we, have, we start with a regular H2O. Oxygen to hydrogen makes what? Water, right? So as the water passes through the electrically charged fields, 
it actually splits it up in two ways. It splits it up into a hydroxyl ion and a hydrogen. So OH negative and H plus. Now, you may not know this, but this hydroxyl ion over here is what is absolutely responsible for the alkalinity of your water. This hydrogen over here has lost its electron. See, it, it's over here with the, with the OH negative. Now this, this is, becomes a positively charged hydrogen ion. And guess where that goes? That's responsible for making the acid water that comes out of the other hose. So now this, the, the way this water split, this water molecule split created the acid and the alkaline water. This, but there are other ways that water splits. And here's another example of it. So over here, down at the bottom, you have an oxygen. The water split into creating just an oxygen atom and a hydrogen molecule, two hydrogens over here. Now this is where the magic comes in, as I have uncovered in some of my research. So here comes the magic. I want you to pay really close attention to this, because this is so important. Because it is my understanding that this is absolutely the most important aspect of your water from my testing. And it's what caused Bob's age to decrease by one year for every day he drank that water. How many of you have ever heard about a hydrogen fuel cell? Right? Well, so what I want to explain to you is that your water machine works a lot like a hydrogen fuel cell. You remember one of the really great things about Enagic's technology is that it has the SD501 has seven big plates, and what are they coated with? Platinum. They're titanium coats that are and plates that are coated with, with platinum. And this is how the magic happens. When those hydrogen molecules come in contact with that platinum, the, they freely give up their electrons. Now, in a hydrogen fuel cell, works exactly the same way. In a hydrogen fuel cell, when the hydrogen comes in contact with the platinum and they give up their electrons, those electrons go down a little wire and create electricity. In ionized water, those little electrons are, are included in the alkaline water, creating quite an interesting phenomenon. Because what was that? It, it creates this free electron. And what was that free radical missing? An electron. So how could we make that free radical happy again and have paired electrons so that it would not cause oxidation by stealing electrons from your cells? What could we give it that would make it whole and happy again? An electron. So what if we could give that electron back by simply drinking a glass of water that was filled with free electrons. Does that sound like something that's interesting to you? Are you starting to see the connection between how this water acts like an antioxidant? We, we can't say the water's an antioxidant because it doesn't actually fit the scientific definition of an antioxidant. But what we have observed, what I have observed, is that it acts like an amazing antioxidant because this is what it's doing. It's donating back that electron to that free radical and stopping the cycle of oxidation. Remember, it was that cycle of oxidation that set up this situation in anyone's body that could create any one of those diseases. Those diseases are all related to that beginning of oxidation that leads to what? Dehydration that leads to inflammation that leads to more oxidation that leads to more dehydration that leads to more inflammation, right? So now we've got to find a way to reverse that cycle. 
And reports through the years have claimed that antioxidants in fruits and vegetables in the foods that we eat would be the answer to this problem of oxidation. But there are some interesting uh, points about antioxidants in foods um, that you might not know about. And so I've gotten you to kind of all of the bad news about what's going on inside of your body from this cycle of inflammation that your body starts. So now we know that we, our cells, all those hundred trillion cells, are, are receiving 10,000 hits every day from oxidizing agents from our environment, but also from inside of our body. And we know that what we need is an antioxidant, and even all of these reports claim it. But I want to end this part one of this talk by giving you just one more little piece of bad news. And then when it's time for me to get up and talk again, I'm going to deliver the good news, OK? So here's the, ba here's the bad news. The antioxidants in all of those fruits and vegetables and supplements all have some limitations because antioxidants are tissue specific. That means that vitamin A only helps support your mucous membranes and your lungs. And vitamin E helps with your cardiovascular system. And vitamin C helps support connective tissue and your skin. That's why when Shan was talking about vitamin C deficiencies and the collagen loss yesterday, which gives us wrinkles, uh, you know, and, they, and these antioxidants even have some serious drawbacks in that only 25% of the average antioxidant in your food and supplements can actually be used by your body. And in high doses, fat-soluble vitamins like A and E can actually become toxic to your liver. And here's the one thing that I want you to take away is this that as those antioxidants do exactly the job that they were meant to do, because there is a free radical and they're going to quench a free radical, how do you think they're going to do that? How do you think they're going to neutralize that free radical? They're going to do it by donating an electron. Now what happened to that antioxidant? It's missing an electron, so now it's actually become a weak free radical itself. So while it it quenched a really bad free radical, it became a weak free radical, and it actually adds to that free radical oxidative stress in your body. So it's going to slow down those really terrible oxidizers, but it can never stop the cycle of oxidation. And so later when I come back, I'm going to be explaining how water with free electrons can actually reverse these, these whole uh, situations of oxidation that leads to dehydration that leads to inflammation, right? So uh, that's it for part one, and I will be seeing you later. We've had a little change in scheduling, so I will see you soon. Give it up for Dr. Peggy Parker. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You want to explain these real quick within sure. 60 seconds? So I've written lots of things to help you um, as tools. And so this is actually the first one Stan asked me to write, which is uh, using ionized water in your kitchen. So it takes you through everything, gives you step-by-step -step details of how to do everything from clean your kitchen to cook food to clean your food completely using ionized water only. There's a companion book to it that's called Your Home, a Chemical-Free Sanctuary that tells you how to clean your house, every surface in your house. Um, and then this is my ionized water protocols that takes, um, takes you from head to toe and tells you how to use different pHs of ionized water um, in, in everything that could be going on from eye problems to ear problems to fungal toenails and how to make your hair look better. And then this is my latest one that takes you through this cycle of, of oxidation that leads to dehydration, that leads to inflammation, and tells you how to reverse it. And uh, some of you might not know that I was a chef in Dallas for 20 years before I became a doc. And so I put my skills together 
and wrote a cookbook to help you stay on the straight and narrow called OMG, That's Allergy Free. And wow. so all wow. of those can be found at 6A Tools. We, we really appreciate you. You're such a blessing to have you on board with us. Thank you, Thank so you Dr. Much. Peggy. Give it up again one more time for Dr. Peggy Parker.